hello and welcome to my channel if you're new here i'm jasmine i'm a homeschool mom and here on this channel i share not just things about homeschool but also things about homemaking motherhood all of that for today's video i want to focus on uh history so before i get started there are going to be timestamps down in the description box because this video is just going to, going to kind of be like a mixture of resources um and so i i felt like it would be best to include all of to include all of these things in one video instead of having a bunch of separate ones so you can refer to the description box for timestamps if you want to kind of skip around but in today's video i'm going to be sharing not just what our favorite history picture books are but i'm going to be sharing what some of me and my husband's favorite history books have been i'm going to give you a quick um, bookshelf tour showing some of the history books that we have on our shelves some that we have read some that we have on hand but haven't yet made it around to reading yet but plan to i'm going to be sharing how i find these history books both for our kids and for myself and my husband i'm also going to be sharing a couple of other resources as well now i did recently put out a history curriculum and resource video so if you watch that then you know that we actually don't follow a um a history curriculum i research and i find books dealing with whatever time frame or topic that we want to um touch on that year I research and I find those resources on my own so that I can pull all those things together and that is what we use as our history curriculum. So um, there have been a couple of different ways that I've been able to do that research. It's helpful when we share like our homeschool curriculums, our, our methods and, and things that we're using, but I think it's also really helpful when we share how it is that we find those things, sort of like provide another tool, another resource for other homeschool moms. So hopefully that's what this video will be for you. One thing I wanna mention, because I'm going to be sharing quite a few of our favorite history um, history-based picture books, so one thing I've realized um, over time, our oldest is eight going on nine, entering the fourth grade. Picture books are for older kids as well. Um, they can be great resources for them too. So don't you know cancel out um, using picture books to teach things in history for older kids. It can be used for both the younger and the older crowd. So um, first thing I want to touch on though is um, my sources of information. How is it that I come across these book titles? How am I finding these? So, of course, it's not just one source. Um, okay, so this one I found through Instagram, Stories of Color. If you're not familiar with this Instagram page, on the Stories of Color website, you could easily get lost on that website for quite an extended time. The reason being is it's not just a hub for um, book lists, diverse book lists, but it's also set up to where you can create your own list. Um, it's also set up to where you can submit book titles. So if you come across a book that, you know, would be for adding diversity to someone's bookshelf, with that title, and then it kind of becomes like a community built um, book list hub. But um, needless to say, the website is really, really resourceful. The email list is definitely one you want to get on. You guys have definitely heard me mention before, especially recently, but Heritage Mom blog is another one. So Amber O'Neill Johnston is the one who runs that blog. She's the creator of that. She's also the one who has created those heritage packs. Um, you guys, if you saw my history curriculum resources video, then you know that we have the Af amazing Africa heritage pack um, that we'll be using this year in conjunction with our um, other books. She's also on Instagram, she shares there as well, but I mainly use her website. On her site, she shares all kind of book recommendations. They're broken up into time periods. She also shares books around things like composer study, poet study, artist study, which is really helpful, especially if you incorporate a little bit of the Charlotte Mason homeschooling method, or if you don't, I love that she has it broken up that way into like the studies that she has personally done with her kids. Whatever books she finds, whatever notes she has for those studies, she shares right there on her website. And so a lot of times, both stories of color and Heritage Mom blog both of those sites are usually great starting points for me. Not only do I get book titles from those sources, but then I also 
will because i'm on like amazon or whatever and i find those books then it leads me to another book and another one and so it just kind of starts me on my own research and so those two sites i highly highly recommend and i also recommend getting on her email list as well and i will leave both of their websites and instagram handles down in the description box because you definitely want to follow them over on instagram too another resource that i use and i think it is often forgotten about is the bibliographies and further reading sections that are usually in the backs of books so these are in the backs of picture books and the back of chapter books but check those out too because i actually have gotten quite a few titles in the past from those sections those are the resources that the author used and so if you like the story that um that you just read or you found it to be really resourceful why not take a look at the resources that the author actually used to put that together and so I utilize that as well and of course you can't go wrong with using your library and local bookstores so um now I will say for me personally that um tends to be a little bit more tedious because it's sort of like just um browsing the shelves picking a book and just skimming through the book right there or just taking the jotting the title down to research that book later and get you know going back for it so that one's a little bit more tedious it's not like the the work has kind of been done for you and it's just you know it's on a curated list it's still a resource two youtube channels that i either have used am using or um, the other one, I more so am looking um, to use in the future because we're not at that part in history yet. But the first one you guys have heard me mention before, which is Sankofa Read Aloud. So that channel, it's a kid's read aloud channel. Pretty much the focus of the, the channel, the types of read alouds that she picks is to keep things culturally diverse, but she more so focuses on the African-American community. So. I do like that because if you do a YouTube search for kids read aloud channels, for the most part, they tend to um, bring in books like uh, Pete the Cat or, you know, um, Dragons Love Tacos or The Day the Crayons Quit. So it's more like those type of fun read alouds, which is great. I'm not knocking it. It's just that I like that this that there is a channel out there that focuses on culturally diverse books. If you know of another one, then please drop it down in the comments because it will be great if we could kind of make the comment section sort of like a, you know, resource drop for those who have found this video. Um, the second channel is actually a reenactment channel. So it's called Not Your Mama's History. Um, the reason why I say that I'm saving this channel for the future is because we have not reached, um, we haven't reach the point of talking heavily about American history. And so we haven't really touched on slavery, at least in depth, we've touched on it a little bit, but we haven't like um, gone through a time where we've like focused on um, the building up of America and things like that. Um, so I'm saving that one for a time in the future when we get there in our history studies. But I like that channel because it's sort of like, um, it's sort of like a living book, but it's a video. So <laughs> I like the fact that she has taken the time, the creator of that channel, she's taken the, the time to reenact day-to-day um, -day life for slaves, slave owners. And she kind of brings that um, into a more, she, she kind of brings it down on a level to where it's easy to understand, easy to communicate what that was like back then. And so I think that um, that's a really good resource too. And we will definitely be using it. There's another one I found too. I couldn't find it again for the sake of this video, but on that channel, she reenacts colonial uh, living, day-to-day -day living for, you know, uh, during that time period in America. I can't think of the name of that channel. I couldn't find it again. I thought I subscribed to it, apparently not. If I find it again though, I will leave it down in the description box because that one is a, um, like I mentioned, it's another reenactment channel as well for history. She just focuses on the colonial times, day-to-day uh, -day living. I'm gonna share a couple of our favorite um, history picture books that we have read together. Um, so we have used a lot of scribed, a lot of Sankofa read aloud. So we've used a lot of non-physical books for history. So for the most part, these are the ones that we just have physically um, on hand that I can show you. But um, let's see. So 
The first one is, this one is actually like a super short chapter book, but it touches on five brilliant sciences. So it's called Great Black Heroes, Five Brilliant Sciences. This book was a great introduction to the sciences that it touched on. Um, we really got a lot of information out of that one. The next one is the DK Find Out series. So we used the Egypt one when we first studied ancient Egypt. Um, a couple, what was it, like uh, two years ago, we studied ancient Egypt a little bit. Didn't go as deep as I as I hope, and my son was way younger. So um, yeah, but we just we touched the surface of ancient Egypt, and I found that book to be a really good resource for that. Um, the next one is Heart and Soul: The Story of America and African Americans. If you are or will be touching on um, African American history, the building of America, anything around that time frame for history, I think this book is a must have to be quite honest. The pictures in it um, speak volumes for one and two, I just I think this just was a well put together book. It approaches those hard points in history that we often find difficult to talk about. It's just put into a language that is um, very easy to communicate to a child. So I think that book is a must have. Another one is Encounter. And you'll notice that these picture books are all centered around kind of like um, a specific time frame. That's because at one point we were um, focusing on Native American history and then there was another point like i mentioned that we were focusing a little bit on um ancient egypt history we haven't gone anywhere past that for real and so that's the time period that most of the most if not all of these read alouds are um based on so encounter which is like um it's like through the eyes of a native american child talking about his feelings when christopher columbus um comes to land in america and so that one is a great um a great one. The Trail of Tears. This is a stepping to reading book. Now this one is more so like a just laying out the facts kind of kind of read. Um, but nonetheless, it's still a good one. The story of Ruby Br Ruby Bridges, uh, the very first Americans. This is also one that's more so like just laying out the facts. It's not necessarily um, like in story mode but it does give a lot of great information especially when it breaks down like the different living styles of each of those tribes um then you have portraits of african-american heroes this one i bought for the kids but i actually bought a little bit for myself too because the portraits in it are just so beautiful um but it's a good resource uh it's one of those uh, compilation type books that I think is good to have. And then you have Speeches That Changed the World. Um, this one was on my list for a while. I finally was able to snag it from Barnes & Noble um, a little while back. I think this one, though we have not used it yet because um, at least for the information in it, it's going to be used more so for like copy work um, until we get to that point. But I think this is a great one to have on hand for history purposes. Now, the next one, Indian No More. Uh, we read this book last year. It was a great living book um, for that Native American history. Um, it sort of gives you facts or a glimpse into the life of Native Americans during that time frame when um, the tribes were being forced off of their land and being um, forced onto reservations or to take on life as a normal American. And so um, that book was actually, my son said that that was one of his favorite read alouds that we did last year. Uh, what Color Is My World? I like this book. It's a short chapter book. I like it because it touches on, it's a story by the way, it's a story that intertwines um, facts about um, the people that it touches on. But I like the, the book because it touches on people that are not commonly studied or talked about. And then we have the book Itch. We have uh, King of Ragtime, uh, My Hands Sing the Blues, which is about um, Ramari Bearden. And then The Secret Garden of George Washington Carver. This book has beautiful illustrations. Um, Henry's Freedom Box. And then uh, this is The Rope, a story from the Great Migration. This is one that we don't have on hand physically, but 
I do remember our kids listening to that one on YouTube and they loved it. Uh, Hidden Figures, the picture book. We do have the chapter book. We haven't read the chapter book version yet, but the picture book, they definitely enjoyed. Uh, Dave the Potter was another one they liked. Uh, Gordon Parks, how the photographer captured black and white America. Um, and then Little Melba and her big trombone story of Melba Liston. And then for the books that I enjoyed uh, reading for history, these are, this is not a lengthy list. I actually did not used to like history as much as I have been growing to um, recently. But uh, let's see, the autobiography of Malcolm X was one lies my teacher told me it was so resourceful so this book is just out of the gate starts um the author is just spewing like all these um he's like debunking all these myths about history that we were told but it's you know using actual resources he's giving you you know tools and things like that not to mention the bibliography section of the book is just this book is a it's a whole resource book on its own i feel like so this one um, if you don't, out of the three books that I'm going to share from my, that I read myself, if you don't get any of them or look into any of them, I would say start or at least look into lies my teacher told, told me. Um, the other one is Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass. I'll be honest, that one was a little bit of a hard read for me, but it definitely was, um, it was definitely valuable. So now I will turn the camera around and give you guys a quick tour of what is on our bookshelves that we have for history all right so this is our very small um history book section um for me and my husband so um just real quick we have black against empire the history and politics of the black panther we have the autobiography of martin luther king jr now i do remember this one because my husband has definitely read more of these than i have thus far i do remember him saying that this one like in comparison to the autobiography of malcolm x um like the perspective it's written from wasn't as good um and then we have the souls of black folk by w.e.b du bois um this is the narrative of the life of frederick Douglass. An Indigenous People's History of the U.S., Negro Rulers of Scotland and the British Isles. Then we have The New Jim Crow, Medical Apartheid, Looting Machine, um, that's Mike Tyson, uh, Up From Slavery. And then we have The Librarian of Auschwitz, which this one, it is based on a true story. Um, I started it. I didn't finish it, though. Uh, then we have How... Europe underdeveloped Africa, um, the miseducation of the Negro, and lies my teacher told me. And I think that is actually it as far as what we have on our shelves. And like I mentioned, some of these we have read, some we've started, um, but some of these we just haven't made it through yet, but definitely plan to. So those are the history books that we have on our shelves. Um, me and my husband, like I mentioned, we haven't yet made it through all of those books. You guys see how thick some of those books are. Um, they're, they're lengthy reads. And so, um, and then for me personally, I have to be in a certain headspace to digest the information. I'm just being honest. And so I haven't made it through all of them yet. I do plan on picking up uh, the indigenous peoples one next though. Basically my plan is to, at least for the books that touch on like um, a time period that we're going to be touching on like soon, those are the ones that I'm trying to get read so that I can pull information from them that we can utilize in our homeschool studies because I want to be educated too and I want to make sure that I'm able to relay the facts um, to our kids and not, you know, I want to know what I'm talking about. Um, and so, yeah, I'm trying to stay a step ahead and um, read those books first. And that is actually it for this video. I hope that you guys found it helpful. Um, if so, then don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, then don't forget to hit that red subscribe button as well. I will have all of the things that I said would be linked down in the description box, uh, including the timestamps. So if you need to like come back to this video, you can just click there and jump straight through. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.